Hi, everyone. Welcome to our CAB workshop. We're going to give it another two minutes to allow people to join. Thanks for being here. Hi, everyone. Well, we're going to kick it off at two minutes past the hour. Welcome, welcome. We're going to officially start at two minutes past the hour. So I'm going to give it another minute. Welcome, everyone. This should be another 30 seconds and we'll kick it off. Hi everyone, welcome to today's CAB workshop. We're talking about how to build a business case for your advisory board. Couple of notes on housekeeping. We're recording the webinar, so we'll send everybody the recording after. As we go through the through the session, please type in your questions in the Q&A box and we'll go get to those questions time permitting. And then at the end, we have some time as well. So today's agenda, quick introductions, and then we're gonna talk about why, why do you need a business case? Critical questions to ask to complete your business case, then a Q&A, and at the end, a few minutes of CAB resources. So I'm Tatiana Falcone, VP of Marketing, and Rob, go ahead and say hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Rob Jensen, a consultant facilitator with Ignite Advisory Group. So quick comments on Ignite, who we are. We're the only global firm dedicated solely to advisory boards, customer advisory boards, and partner advisory boards. We've completed over 300 advisory board engagements, and many B2B companies use the industry best practices that we've developed in their CAB programs. We offer a full suite of CAB solutions, so you can work with us, partner with us to create a board. We'll help you manage and launch the board as well. You can hire us to optimize a board. We'll assess your existing program and provide recommendations. And you can hire us to facilitate your CAB meetings, both in person and virtual. So we wanna do a quick poll. What is the current status of your customer advisory board program or your partner advisory board program? So um, go ahead and answer the poll. You don't have a program trying to launch. Your existing program is on hold. Program is in progress. You are expanding. You want to add some new boards. We'll just give it another 10 seconds or so. Nice answers all over the board. Yeah, so I'm going to end the poll. Do you see the results, Rob? Yeah. So, good mix. Majority, yeah, good mix. The majority have a program in progress and then a lot. Well, several people just don't have the program yet. So welcome to all. It's interesting. Right. Some people have program in progress and this is, uh, you know, setting up the, um, uh, the, the, uh, you know, why, why, why get it started with my business case? That's interesting. Yeah. Some people need to secure a, a support for existing boards or they want yeah. information. So yeah. go ahead, Rob. Yeah. 
Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, again, good, good, good answers to the poll. Um, we're going to talk about why to start a cab business case, which is usually, you know, the place where people first start thinking about it. Maybe your management is asking for it. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not aware of it. Maybe you you know that you need to engage with your customers better. So um, it's a good place to start as a foundation. I'm trying to hit next, Tatiana. There we go. Okay. So why uh, man, why your your management may be asking, right? Uh, if you say, hey, we want to start a customer advisory board, and they, they say, well, we need the business case, it could be because, you know, there could be some fear, uncertainty, and doubt from their end, right? They're not, you know, sometimes management is not clear on what they're getting into, right? They're not clear of what the benefits are, where it might fit in their overall strategic priorities. They're not comfortable sharing uncertainty with customers, right? Sometimes management doesn't want to communicate that they don't have all the answers, um, which, uh, you know, is not, not conducive to a customer advisory board. They're not sure of their, of the expectation, the participation level, right? Wait, what do you want me to do? What am I getting into? Not sure of their own department's capability. You know, they're not sure of, uh, if they get input, how, to what extent they'd be able to act on it. So there might be some, some reasons that they're not sure of you know what they're getting into, but you do need to build a business case because um, you do want to gather executive management buy-in, support, and trust. Right, your management needs to be on board with it and sponsoring and supporting it. Not have it be like some sort of marketing experiment. And if well, if it doesn't work, you know that was on them, and we're you know it's not our fault. Right, you don't want that. Um, again. You will, you will need the literal investment from your management team, right? Budget, resources, and most importantly, time, right? You need some time to set it up and recruit and prepare your program and your meeting. Um, set up goals and objectives, right? Uh, that, that'll be used to create your program charter and determine the questions that you're trying to get answered. We'll talk about this a little bit more too and pinpoint the, the type of cab that you're gonna set up and what kind of the, what the participants will look like, right? So what to include in your, um, your business case, right? The questions we're trying to answer, right? What, what, why your company needs a customer advisory board, why you're initiating it, why now? Um, you know, and the benefits and outcomes you hope to achieve, right? You could be you know, going into a new uh, business area. You might be launching a new program. You might be changing your sales model from indirect to direct. You know, there might be some real reasons why you wanna set up a customer advisory board and run, run run it by and, you know, kind of get some feedback from your customers, right? So also to include in your business case, program goals and objectives, what we're trying to learn, the potential ROI. We'll talk about this in a little bit too. Um, and your program plan, right? Who the leadership is, who's the executive sponsor, who's the management team, the budget for it, how often you're going to meet, where you're going to meet, remote, virtually, how, you know, once or twice a year in person, uh, the resources, what, what team members are going to be uh, 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 working on the board, right? Your timelines, how, when is your first meeting and how long is it, it going to take to set up the, the program, the charter, recruiting, set up your first meeting, prep for your first meeting. This can take some time and it should not be in, in uh, a month, <laughs> despite what we're sometimes... Uh, discover from, from potential clients is it does take more than a month to set all this up. And then what kind of, you know, the makeup of it, what customers are you going to have uh, on your board, right? And your sales team can be really a great resource for that. So um, questions to ask when you're setting up a customer advisory board, right? And before we get, get into that, we have our second poll, which is, you know, for those of you um, that are, you know, either have a program or considering a program, what is your biggest cab challenge, right? Could be getting off the ground, getting started, getting management support, recruiting the right cab members, scheduling, getting customers to attend, preparing the content, the agenda, motivating your internal team, uh, communicating outcomes, right? Reporting and capturing the actions and action items. Or all, you know, maybe there might be several, you can vote for several here. So which ones are your top challenges? We'll give it a minute here. Good diversity here. Wow. All, all the, <laughs> maybe for some, all the above, right? Some of you. Preparing the agenda content. That's interesting. 
Getting customers to attend. Interesting. Okay. That's the top one so far. Hmm. Scheduling. It's interesting, you guys. We're, you know, we're getting out of COVID pandemic. People are used to virtual meetings. Some people are eager to travel. Some people are not eager to travel. So getting customers to, you know, get on a plane and go to a meeting. That's interesting. Okay. That's the top one. Okay. Tatiana, what do we do? I Do I just close it and move on? Oh yeah, I think I missed clicking stop, sh stop share. So everyone please X out the box on your screen. <laughs> Keep going. All right, getting customers to attend, interesting. Okay. So questions to ask about your, your program. This will, this, you know, by asking these questions, and I think it'll start to open up the eyes of your of those around you. And question number one is, how do you currently engage with your customers, right? We I've talked to so many people and say, of course we engage with our customers. Or, you know, we listen, we voice of customer. And I ask, well, how do you do that? And the answers can be very telling and sometimes even bizarre. But anyway, um, you know, sometimes your product or sales team, you might have satisfaction, feedback, you know, desired change or improvements help with other challenges. You know, sometimes it's your service and implementation team for you software companies, but that's with your sales and your product team, right? Um, your marketing department might, you know, if you do a poll or you have a newsletter, how'd you hear about us? A project, you know, if you have referrals, right? Do you have, do you have uh, your, your, your best customers that can you use as referrals? Do you have testimonials or innovative, you know, use cases, case studies, videos? Right, so this is where you might be getting information from your customers, right? Um, what typically happens, and it certainly in my, you know, experiences, you know, how, what are the mediums for this information, right? Well, sometimes it's sales meetings, right? So you're, you're, you might have your sales team might meet with customers. They might have quarterly business reviews, QBRs. Sometimes your marketing team might send surveys. Uh, you might have a formal net promoter score program, NPS. You might have user group meetings. It might be online reviews or social media. Um, sometimes it's customer service. You know, there's a, you have a customer service and there are a lot of complaints or something. Uh, it could be ad hoc, right? It could be all the above or none of the above. Um, or there's, maybe you don't have any formal way and it's very, hit and miss, or, you know, I, you might have a company that, you know, one feedback point can change your whole trajectory based on one data point. Certainly that happened in my background long ago. Um, but that's, all these ways are, you know, can be the typical results for the, for these mediums are very product and user product user participation, right? Hey, can you move the button from here to here? Or can you change this field? Or can we add this? Or can we make the sign out longer term uh, time? Um, it's very tactical, right? It's, it's low value, it's product features, what we used to call feeds and speeds, right? It's not material and it's not strategic, right? Um, very tactical and product focused. Customer advisory boards on the flip side are much more strategic discussions and input, right? You're dealing not with, you may, they may or may not necessarily be your product, your, your product users, they're typically executives. So you're not gonna get that low level product feedback. It's more broad knowledge of their company operations and, and, and strategies and challenges, right? You, these people are gonna know, oh, we're gonna move into this other market and we wish your product could do this, right? Whereas your product users might be very, very focused. Um, so that's, that's question one, right? What are you doing right now for customer engagement, right? Question number two is how are we receiving product input and feedback, right? So is your product team, for example, improving your products, right? So is your product team thinking, well, it'd be great if you can do this. And I, I think it would be great to have the, the capability to do that. Are, are your product team, in other words, is your are your product team improving the product adding features that they think your customers want, right? We think they would be great. Uh, how is the feature roadmap prioritized, right? Is it what's easiest? Is it what the biggest account wants, right? Is it, uh, you know, time-wise, how, how is it structured, right? And if, if your product team is engaging your customers, how, right? Again, it, is it ad hoc? Is it from sales or account managers who, they might go to a meeting and my customer said this, can we do that? And then they do it for the one customer and that's the only customer who uses it, right? 
Is it online support? Is it, you know, these tactical mediums, right? How are your, how are your products being developed, right? When we have a cab process, you know, you're learning about additional business opportunities, you're collecting feedback, and that really, that helps prioritize your, your feature roadmap. We, in many meetings I've been in, we have breakouts where we have feature roadmap prioritization exercises that are really great and engaging and the product team um, can prioritize the roadmap as really eye-opening for them. But the other thing is they're, gaining, they're, they're gathering additional desired features that maybe they hadn't thought of, they didn't know about. Oh, you guys wanted to do that? Hmm, maybe we can do that. Maybe we can't, but that's good to know, right? To help us develop other features that maybe were not on our roadmap. You can learn about additional challenges and bottlenecks and discover unique use cases. Wow, this guy's using it for that? I didn't know that. Um, you can uncover unmet needs and it's a real circular process for how um, your, your, your product development and, and roadmaps can be uh, prioritized, okay? <laughs> Question number three to ask, are we launching any new products or expanding into new markets? And a lot, for a lot of companies, the answer is yes, we're doing that. Okay, um, it's certainly a way to increase revenue. You're applying your technologies to additional unmet needs, creating new products and services. You might be entering new markets, expanding, you know, different realms, applications, departments, companies, industries, right? You're, 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 you're trying to increase your product footprint within your accounts or trying to reach new markets, right? Well, cabs can help uncover new product opportunities, right? The members will have more broad insights to wider business functions and operations, right? Your product users are typically in one department doing one thing, whereas your customer advisory board members have a wider access and insight into their overall business, right? Um, they also have a a network of colleagues who might be able to use the product, right? If you say, oh, we're expanding into healthcare. Oh, I have a buddy of mine who works in healthcare. He'd like to he'd be interested in meeting with you, right? Um, cabs can also help with new product positioning and messaging, right? You might have, hey, it does this, but your, your, your advisory boards members can have a better message, a wider one or a more relevant or, or insightful uh, uh, message that help you craft when creating a new product or getting into new markets, right? Okay, question number four, how do we test new products, right? Um, do you have an active beta tester program, right? This is certainly for the software companies out there. Um, how do you generate initial product feedback before hitting the market, right? Um, how are tester companies selected, right? Do they volunteer? Are they the squeaky wheels who are kind of complaining? Is it the, or is it your largest accounts, right? Oh, this is, they, we get the most money from these guys. They should, you know, test the new product, whether or not that's the right match or they're the, they want to do it or they volunteered, you know, how are you testing your new products, right? Um, customer advisory board members are, are ideal product testers. They can collect feedback from their users. Often they have many users. Uh, they can provide strategic input, right? More better than the tactical uh, feedback we talked about earlier. Um, their customer advisory board members are invested in your solution and company success. So when they provide feedback, they're, they're typically, they often buy the products, the new ones the most. Um, they may have even suggested your new product or your new features as part of the customer advisory board, right? Um, Again, they can they can um, they might have some messaging and marketing feedback, network of colleagues who might want to try it, and they are invested to make sure that they want to see your customers succeed. Okay, question number five to ask your company: Do our do our customers renew or buy other products? Right? Are are your customers renewing with their contracts or buying your other products or are they going to your competition? How do, does your company measure customer retention, right? Do you lose customers to your competition? Sometimes some of you might be saying, yeah, we kind of do, right? Are your customers fully using your solutions? Are they aware of its capabilities? Many meetings I've been in, it, it, host companies are surprised that, that their members are not aware of some of the capabilities that the product does because they use it for a very small or tiny uh, a por a portion of what it's capable of doing. And then are they are your customers aware of and purchase your other products, right? Many times customers buy just one, they don't buy your other ones because they may just simply not be aware of them, 
Um, or they, or if you're talking to one kind of customer, they might be in one department, like the tactical user, and they don't know of or care about the, oh, that's another, that's another department I'm not in. But your customer advisory board members will have, again, better access and insight to a wider portion of your company. So you have, you'll have better penetration of your other products, right? Um, they're your best customers, cap members are your best customers. Again, they, they, um, use most of your products, often the, the, the longest time customers. Um, they can uncover issues not communicated to your sales teams or not to customer service. Um, they can learn and, and empower you to take steps to increase product use, stickiness, and cross-sell, right? Okay. Again, I'm just going to pause here. If people have any questions, do, do click on the Q&A or, you know, you can use the webinar chat too. I'm certainly open to uh, answering any questions uh, that you might have relative to, you know, some internal uh, examination when launching a customer advisory board program. <clears throat> Question number six, we're going to get kind of into some of the marketing realms here. Do our customers act as referrals, right? Um, how do you get referrals right now? Are they, do you have an active, eager, vetted group of happy customers prepared to engage your prospects, right? Or certainly my experience, it was ad hoc, hit and miss, depends on timing. Hey, can we talk to this customer? Well, they're not really happy right now. We might, can you come back to me later? Um, does this initiate a fire drill whenever needed? Again, certainly did in my experience. I, I, uh, customer um, sales support was under my, my realm. And when there was, you know, we needed a customer reference, it ignited a fire drill of the one who was the proper one on that product and are they happy now and do they want to talk and are they able, legally allowed to talk and all that right if if so if you say you know do you have referrals if it's no or sort of you're probably missing out on you know revenue opportunities here too customer advisory boards they're great for referrals they know you they know you they understand your products right your company they use them often the best to their fullest um, they're most successful with them and they know your company and your strategies and where your, you know, your operations and leadership, where you're investing, where your, where your development's going. Uh, they're your biggest fans and thus their ideal ref referrals, right? Um, and then you know the cust you, you know your board members, how they use the, your solutions, how they're successful, how they might be, you know, innovative in a, in a certain way that another prospect of yours wants to use them, right? So that's another benefit for, you know, how you can launch a customer advisory board, right? Okay, question number seven. Do your customers appear in your marketing materials, right? Do you, you know, obviously customers lend credibility to your brand. They are more influential to your, to your prospects than your own messaging, right? And, you know, ways to highlight customers are case studies, video testimonials, webinars, industry articles, social media, pictures and company logos on your website, right? Um, we know that this has always been tricky. It, it, it was tricky long ago when I was in charge of all this and customers didn't want to do this or they, or, you know, their lawyers get involved, which uh, I feel your pain there. Um, all, there's many roadblocks for getting your customers to, to, to serve as marketers for your, for your company. But again, customer advisory board members, they're eager to support your marketing efforts. They're able to get past, you know, legal objections, right? So if you have a user and you say, hey, we want to use you guys as a, as a case study. And he says, great, let me just check with my lawyer. Lawyers say no to everything. But if it's, a, if it's an executive uh, being a part of your marketing uh, case study or whoever, wow, the legal objections tend to not derail things. And if they even go to legal, right? They just do it themselves a lot of times, depending on, the size of the company and their, their program and stuff. Um, they often go above and beyond, right? I've had customer advisory board members, they speak at customer, at, at conferences or internal uh, sales kickoffs. How, how are they sold? How, how did their reps sell them? You know, they might write guest blogs on your website, right? They will do a lot because they're fans of your company. Okay. <clears throat> Question number eight to ask when you're starting a customer advisory board. Does our company communicate thought leadership, right? How, how are we communicating? Um, obviously thought leadership positions your company as a leader in your market. It, you, you become a trusted source when companies look for a solution in that space, right? 
<clears throat> you might communicate a proactive position to a shared industry challenge, right? It's not necessarily, hey, buy our product. It might be, hey, here's how, you know, so for, you know, IT security, here's how some companies are addressing this particular challenge and have overcome it, right? Um, you might illustrate numerous potential solution approaches. You might go at it this way. You might solve it this way. Some people do it this way. And you can convey how innovative companies, i.e. your customers, are addressing it with your solution, right? Oh, uh, Ron, again, there's, a, there's a question from Doug. Do you see it, the question? Let's see. Okay, let's see. How to incent cab members to participate in marketing stuff? Uh, it's a great question. What, what typically... For customer advisory boards is, I will say the, the incentivization is much lower than what you would need for a non-customer advisory board product user. In other words, you might, they might, sometimes they might volunteer, right? Let's say you're, 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 you're let's say you're in a customer advisory board meeting and the product, the topic comes up of product use and a board member might say, oh, we do that. Yeah, it works great. And you might say, you're mar oh, we'd love to do a customer advisory board uh, or a, a case study on that, uh, on your use, right? They might say, yeah, we can do that. Let's talk, right? Um, you don't necessarily have, there's not as much um, incentivization required for customer advisory boards because they're on, they're on your board. They're on board. They're with your program. They're trying to support you guys, right? It just happens easier, more organically and faster with less roadblocks for, for, for cab members to participate in marketing stuff. There's exceptions. There are customer, some companies that can't do this. It's their policy, right? We've all, for those of you that are in this space, in this, uh, in this uh, job, like I was, there's a, I've heard every roadblock ever. Um, and sometimes it's mission impossible, but you know, customer advisory boards are gonna be your best shot. Um, here too, big benefit of well-run cubs, uh, cabs, the voices of your customer executives, you know, they'll address and the publish and promote your, um, your, your company and your challenge and your products, right? You, 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 it's really great for this particular challenge. Okay, question nine. Hey, hey executives, how are you guys learning about market trends, right? <clears throat> and where, where's, where are your executives obtaining market intelligence, right? They might say, oh, of course we do. Well, how do you do that? Well, it might be trade publications or analysts, right? Gartner or whoever. Um, the field from sales reps or account reps or social media. Um, oh, of course we hear things, right? Um, but as always, the information can be ad hoc, inconsistent, contradictory, biased, right? Hey, I, look at this article. It says this. We should do that, right? From one article, right? Certainly my experience, I'm sure your companies would never do that, but in my experience, that was that was common. Um, again, management will make big moves on a, a few or a single data point, right? <laughs> yes, uh, cab programs, you can uncover a wealth of trends and industry information directly from customers, right? What they're seeing and experiencing, how competitors are approaching them, that, that comes up in, in board meetings. Hey, your competitors, they offered me this, or the, it's cheaper or faster, or this, this trial or something, right? You, you're not gonna hear that unless it's you know, from salespeople who happen to you know, stumble onto it in a QBR or something. Uh, there might be other vendors you could benchmark you know, in, in another industry that's doing something really good, or somebody you should integrate with or partner with or acquire. This happens very, very regularly. Um, other technologies you should, inter, you know, should work with. Uh, this comes up in customer advisory board, uh, well-run customer advisory board programs, right? Okay, question number 10, the last one. Are we aware of the ROI, return on investment, uh, a customer advisory board program could bring, right? Uh, sometimes customer advisory management might not know, right? Um, there are studies out there, and this is, we have some resources around this, but the, some places that have done actual studies for customer advisory boards, they've determined that the annual sales can be like 24% higher. Three years after the customer advisory board, they're experiencing, you know, 23% growth in sales. Three years after the cab, you know, um, three years before cab, they might've had growth, but then compared to after a customer advisory board, you know, it's a third higher, 67% sales growth, right? And the productivity, uh, for salespeople can be 18% higher, right? Uh, 
these results can easily add fund a whole cab program, right? One person renews or expands or buys a new product. That might that has, in my experience, more than paid for a customer. The whole program for the year was one guy buying, you know, the big account buying the new product, right? Um, we have some other data on this. This was just one study, you know, as far as sales growth and customer retention and, uh, you know, stickiness. There's, there's some data on this that we have on our website as well that you can check out, right? How are you gonna measure the ROI of your customer advisory board program, right? You can, you can measure the member rev, customer advisory board member revenue before the program and then after the program, right? Measure the Delta, what, what's the, are they the incremental? Are they buying, right? Excuse me. And loyalty, right, for renewals. Not only for your customer advisory board members, but after some time, if you're doing some of the things you're saying, right, other, the, 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 the programs might, and benefits might expand to your other non-customer advisory board members, right? So measure measure all this before the board and then after, right? Referrals, new markets, social media engagements, right? Product direction and input. How many testimonials do you have? How many do you have, you know, after the program? Speaking slots, thought leadership, all this you measure before the program and after the program, especially if you, you know, have a lot of attrition, right? What is our attrition? Wow, we're getting one out of three customers is, is leaving us. Measure it later, it'll almost certainly go down for a lot of times very easy fixes, right? Um, one time I was in a customer advisory board and and the, the one of the big challenges was just, or one of the big complaints was, hey, can you make your your, your service line be open longer? As simple as that. That made such a change and the customers loved it. And it was so easy and, you know, it can be very low hanging, easy fixes, right? So I, you know, quickly <laughs> went through those, um, the questions to ask your management, you know, why you want to uh, get your management on board. You're gonna need their support. Um, it, it should never be a test or an experiment. Let's try one meeting, right? Um, I've blogged on a lot of these topics too. For so, for any of you who might have additional questions around the costs or the time, or you know how to get it off the board, you know problems you might exist, I might encourage you to check out our blog page. But I guess right now I'll pause for any any questions for this getting your getting your cab started and any questions. You know you can uh, uh, enter the Q and A box or type it in chat. Um, I'd also be curious to know those of you who have a program in progress, wow, how did you, how did you get your management team on board, right? Any, any insights, any, any roadblocks there or challenges, right? Did you just say, hey, we're gonna start a board and they said, great, you can have whatever you want. Never any my management, they always had a ton of questions. Um, I'm just going to advance some of the slides and if you have any questions. Oh, there's a question. Sure. There's a question. What's the best way to present the business case to management? Uh, so what I would recommend is um, certainly you're going to, well, let's back up. If you're, well, take this presentation and um, that it's, you know, it's recorded. So you can make your own PowerPoint and some of these questions may be hit with you guys right? And maybe is why you're starting a customer advisory board. I would make a presentation. I would um, get all of management, get the executive team together and make a proposal for starting a customer advisory board. Here's why. Here's why you need to care. Here's what our challenge is. Here's the questions we're going to ask our customers. Why are customers leaving? Whatever it might be, right? Um, and then put together a proposal for a program. We're going to start a customer advisory board. Here's the timeline. Here's Who's going to be involved? Here's what we're going to need everybody to do. Here's the budget. The first meeting is going to be in the fall, in November, with September, right? I put together your proposal for the whole program, and um, you know, be prepared to kind of defend it and answer questions, because um, you know. But have some data in there. Hey, there's some data that says you know attrition is lower with customer advisory boards. Sales will increase, right? Okay, hope that hope that helps. Um, another question, how do you find the right customers for a customer advisory board, right? It's a great question. Um, 
it starts with what you're trying to accomplish, right? It starts with that, that will lead to what kind of a customer advisory board that you're trying to start, right? Strategic executive level, you know, is it, is it partners? Is it, you know, more users? Is it more product focused? Are you looking for input to your higher level strategy? So it's kind of what kind of a board and then finding the right customers is you'll want to get your salespeople involved. What, what I've done is I've put together um, like uh, an Excel spreadsheet with the, the, the information for them to complete, right? But here's, the, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for this kind of customer who uses this particular product in this region, right? North America, let's say, um, who's been on the product a couple years, right? Maybe not someone who's brand new and just bought it yesterday. They're maybe not going to be able to provide a lot of input, right? Get all this together, get your salespeople to nominate board members, collect the board members, and then whittle it down to your best top, you know, 18 to 20. I hope that makes sense for how to find the right customers. And then you have to invite them. And that's a whole other process. And, um, you know, we can certainly, that's a whole other discussion for inviting them. Uh, we do offer follow-up for this from this call. We can get more into it. Uh, all right. Next question, what is the average cost for the planning and execution of a customer advisory board? You know, we have got this question before and I know some of my colleagues have got this question before and it's really hard to put a number on it guys. And it's not just a, a, a cliched answer or something. It really depends on um, a number of factors. I wrote a blog on this and it's, you can find it on our website and it's around how to plan for the costs of, for your customer advisory board. And um, it really just depends on your company, your industry, what you're trying to do, what, what your customers, you know, how, how much they're gonna participate, right? So if it's, we're gonna meet twice a year, we're gonna meet, is it virtual? Is it, you know, what you're trying to do? It's hard to put a number on it. So I, it, again, it's, it's, I apologize for the kind of wishy-washy answer, but it does really depend. And um, I encourage you to look at my a blog I wrote around you know, figuring out the costs. Um, hope that helps, Natalie. All right, for Bethany, 18 to 20 is always the best board size. How do you decide on the number of members? Great question. This is this one's actually, I can get a little more specific with numbers around, is, um, you know, we've done so many meetings, hundreds of meetings, as, as Tatiana said. And if you think of the ideal number of customer advisory board members to be in an in-person meeting, let's say, right? We found that the magic number is 12 a dozen even, any, any more than that, and it's kind of too many people, right? You don't maybe not get to everybody, it's maybe too big of a group. Any less than that, and it feels like um, it's too small of a group, right? So if you have 12 customer advisory board members, that means you're gonna need to get, you know, that, that's them in a room. So that means you're gonna need to have, let's say, you know, 15 or 14 people say, yeah, I'm gonna be in that meeting, I'll be there. Because as we all know, okay, the meetings today, someone's gonna say, oh, I can't make it. I have an excuse, could be travel, could be sickness, could be kids, could be business. We're getting acquired, something happened, right? You're gonna get some people who can't make it, right? So you had 15 people that say, yeah, I'm gonna be there. That means you need to invite 18 or 20 people to say, hey, can you come to our customer advisory board meeting in Denver in, in, no, in September? Some are gonna say, no, I can't. I have a meeting, we're traveling pick off, trade show, vacation, right? So if you whittle it down, 18 to 20 that are gonna join your program, you're gonna invite some to the meeting and some are not gonna be able to make it. Some are gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna be there. Then they don't, they can't make it at the last minute, but you're trying to get 12 customers to your meeting about, plus or minus, right? And then lastly is, you know, don't overwhelm them with the number of people from your own company. You wanna have about half that many, right? You wanna have about six, members from your own company, if it's 12 people, right? You have 14 customers, about half that amount of your host company, right? You want it to be mostly customer advisory board members, not too many people from your own company. And some, again, sometimes some clients I've worked with plan to invite everybody and all the salespeople and the new people and every product person, and that's not best. Hope that helps, Bethany, that's a long answer. <laughs> all right, Doug, coming. Coming out of COVID, we are struggling to get in-person attendance. Some customers said, count me in, but now not attending. How can we show what's in it for them and be an active CAD member? 
Doug, that's a great question. And I'm actually discovering, encountering this myself with one of my clients. Um, a lot of people got used to dealing, you know, going with virtual, um, you know, not traveling. Some people might even still be concerned about COVID or have travel policies, right? I would say that the what's in it for them is, is um, in-person meetings, as we all know, our, our in-person meetings are better. They're more engaging. They're more beneficial for the participants. Hopefully your customer advisory board members have joined your program, have already agreed to participate, right? When you recruited them, you gave them your charter and you said, hey, we're going to meet in person once or twice a year. And they said, yeah, I'm going to join that. I'm going to do that, right? Try to remind them that this is what we, we plan to do. We communicated, you agreed to it. Um, we're making it easy. It's in the middle of the country. It's once a year. It's at this hotel that we'll pay for, right? It's only three days, you know, one and a half day meeting plus all in for travel um, and have a great agenda, not just, hey, here's our new demo, right? Have a great agenda of the topics that are going to impact them and they're going to learn and, sh and meet other companies, other their colleagues from other companies addressing this issue, right? The what's in it for them is a great agenda, a great program of, you know, you might have some, you know, cool social activities or opportunities for social engagement, right? Um, hopefully that helps with you know, you're going to meet colleagues. And for whatever it's worth, those customers of mine who um, have gone to a customer advisory board, that this question like doesn't really come up again, right? I've had customer advisory boards that have gone on for a long time and people get it. They don't, they don't question like, why should I travel? They know. Um, for new customers, like maybe your question, Doug, is for maybe around new people who don't know the value. There should be value there. Hopefully they've experienced it before in your other engagements. Um, but have a great agenda that's going to have topics that they've helped uh, create and uh, are value to them, not just your own company PowerPoint and demos and the new product and the roadmap. And here's what it is. Any questions? Not that. Hope that helps, Doug. All right, Natalie, how many employees should be present at a cab of 12 to 15 cab members? So Natalie, it shoot for about half, right? Um, so if it's 12, Customer advisory board, shoot for six. If it's 14 or 15 customer advisory board, you know, seven, maybe eight. Have the have your, you know, it's about half, right? And for the your company people that are gonna be at the meeting, have them stay in the whole time. Don't come and go and take calls and go out. And they should plan on participating the whole time. They should have a reason for being there too. Maybe they're presenting. Uh, they're a session leader for part of the agenda. Right, you're 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 you know you don't want every sales rep to listen to what their customer has to say. You have a note taker that's taking great notes, and you put out a great meeting report. So anybody that's not there will have a great idea of what happened, what the customer said, and there might be some potential for follow-ups. But not everybody has to be there just to hear what the, the company their their customer said, right? And you know, for salespeople, and I've heard them say this is what better opportunity to hear from 12 to 15 customers in a room for a day, right? How long would it take you to go on the road to hear from customer executives if you can even set that up, right? That'd be 12 to 15 trips, right? What's, what's a better spending of time for your leadership to hear from your customers, right? So hopefully that's compelling to get your, to get your own company participants there, not everyone, and to, to limit it by having a great meeting um, report afterwards that you can share internally, right? And share it with your, at your company all hands, send it to everybody. Who wouldn't wanna see what your customers are saying, right? Make sense? Other questions? Thanks, Rob, yeah. I'm gonna advance great the slide. And, by the way, you guys. And, yeah, really uh, great questions, yeah. Yeah, great questions, common questions. You know, some are easy, right? How many customer advisory boards? Some are not, some are harder. What's it cost? Well, it depends on a lot of things. Um, I hope that helps. And, you know, for those of you who, um, not, well, we'll take one more before we kind of finish up because there are some other resources to answer your, your additional questions. All right. Do you have ideas how to make product roadmap session interactive? I find these sessions a bit boring. Oh yeah. So Natalie, I got to tell you, um, the product roadmap sessions for my last you know, meetings for the last few years, they're, they're, these are always the best session 
because um, this is where you do get people up and about. And, um, you know, you have breakouts, you have the roadmap, you have people voting on what the, what their top product is. They're spending monopoly money. They're voting with sticky dots. You put it on the wall. It, it, these are the best sessions, right? On which to get uh, product feedback, right? And then there's other product, uh, other features that are not on the roadmap. What are they? How would they prioritize them, right? These are great um, opportunities for getting people moving, getting them about out of their seats, you know? So your, your sessions should not be boring, like, and, and hey, here's our roadmap, and it's completely baked, right? Like, hey, here's our roadmap for the next two years. Uh, here's what it is. What do you think? That's not a good session, right? You should have some questions around. It should not be completely baked. This should be like, here's what we're thinking. What do you guys think? How would you prioritize this, right? I hope that helps, Natalie. And again, guys, great questions. Um, and some of them can lead to other questions, which kind of leads to the our final uh, kind of uh, topic of the day is where to go for more uh, customer advisory board resources. Todd, do you want to you want to take these? Sure, definitely a lot of great questions there. So going back to that question about how do you present this to your management? Well, you have this webinar as a reference for yourself, and we also have a, a Google Slides deck that you can actually customize with your own you know, company and information and you can use that deck. So we'll send it to you after the webinar. How about that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Halfway done. Definitely. And we have a CAB Resource Center. So come check it, check it out at igniteag.com slash resources, all things CAB, newsletters, podcasts, research, videos, webinars, and two events, CAB events for you, they're upcoming events. So we're gonna be doing a regular CAB workshops. So the next one is all about CAB strategy and design. So we'll send out some information to you after the webinar on that. And then next month also, there's the CAB conference industry event. It used to be in person, there was a hiatus during COVID and now it's virtual. So definitely take advantage. We're gonna have a lot of great speakers from VMware, Google, Adobe, Citrix, Ignite also is presenting there. And it's totally free. So check your email afterwards for the link to, to register. And finally, call us, contact us, or call us for a free CAB evaluation. We'll connect you with an Ignite CAB expert and we'll discuss your advisory board needs, make some recommendations, and also share a suggested advisory board program plan. Thank you everyone for joining us and thank you, Rob. Final words, Rob. Thank you, Tatian. Yes, yeah, for some of you who had some questions and I hope I helped answer them, but for, for some that maybe, you know, had several questions, um, yeah. The, the, the person you'll speak to is a super experienced customer advisory board expert and um, can help provide you, you know, more, more custom answers to your questions and at, can ask you some and really help with whatever you're uh, challenged with to provide some, um, some potential solutions. So some great resources. The other thing that I'll, I'll also advertise for, if you look at our, at our blog page, you guys, I write a lot of them and uh, some of them were on the topics for today. And there's other topics you might want to check out as well that I've addressed. And, you know, sometimes my own engagements are the impetus for some of the topics. So check out our blogs. I hope you like them. <laughs> yeah, thanks, everyone. We'll see you at future CAB workshops and at the CAB conference next month. Thanks for Bye. joining, everybody. Bye.